Latosha Harlins was born on July 14, 1975, in St. Louis, Illinois. When she was six years old, her family moved to South Central Los Angeles by Greyhound bus. When you go someplace else, you're always expecting things to be better. You always have dreams. But those dreams would soon be crushed. Only four years after the family settled into their apartment, Harlin's mother, Crystal, was shot dead in a nearby nightclub. Leaving Latosha's grandmother in charge of her, and her two siblings. The neighborhood had a large list of problems during this time. Racial tensions were high, especially between local Korean store owners and their impoverished black patrons. Black customers were continuously frustrated by what they saw as price gouging on that part of Korean store clerks. On top of store owners' refusal to hire any black employees. Fueling the tension of the neighborhood was a never-ending onslaught of city-sponsored surveillance violence. Operation Hammer took off in 1987. An lapped initiative that sent officers into poor neighborhoods to conduct massive roundups of suspected gang members. From 1986 to 1990, 83 lawsuits against the lapped for excessive force resulted in settlement of at least $15,000. Two weeks before Latosha Harlins walked into Du's Empire Liquor Market, a black man named Rodney King was pulled over by four lapped officers, three of whom were white, for speeding. The officers shot him twice with taser stun darts and then brutally beat him with batons before handcuffing him. He suffered massive injuries, including several skull fractures, broken bones and teeth, and permanent brain damage. The day before Latosha Harlin's killing, the four officers were charged with felony assault. Her grandmother warned Latosha Harlins not to enter Empire Liquor unless she was planning on making a purchase. Everyone knew about the Korean owner's disrespect shown to black customers, and they tried to avoid it as much as possible. But, on the morning of March 16, 1991, Harlins did plan to make a purchase. She made the short walk to the market and picked up a $1.79 bottle of orange. After putting it into her backpack, which jutted out from the top, she made her way to the counter. According to a young witness named Ismail Ali, who was in the store with his older sister at the time. The middle-aged soon J.A.D. saw the girl and immediately started to yell. Harlins responded by lifting up her hand, which contained $2 bills, and explained that she intended to pay. Do, however, grabbed the girl by the sweater, and the two began to fight. Harlins begged her to let her go, but the woman wouldn't release her grip. To break free, the 15-year-old girl struck Do in the face four times, knocking her down. She picked the juice up from the floor, where it had fallen, placed it on the counter, and walked away. Trying to walk out the door, as the Harlin's back was turned, Du reached for her gun and aimed it at the back of her head. And pulled the trigger. The reaction to Harlin's killing was quick and bitter. Black residents protested outside of the Empire Liquor Market. And soon J.A. Du was taken into custody. A security camera tape showed the entire heart-wrenching event on fuzzy, silent film. Du was found guilty of voluntary manslaughter and recommended the maximum prison sentence of 16 years. White Judge Joyce Carlin, however, gave Du probation, 400 hours of community service, and a $500 fine. Then released. The community simmered in anger. That is, until April of 1992 when the verdict came down for Rodney King's assaulters. After the four police officers that senselessly beat Rodney King that night in 1991 were acquitted by a mostly white jury. The people of South Central finally had enough. The streets erupted in protests, riots, fire, and gunshots. For five days, Los Angeles burned, and the LAPD left much of the city to fend for itself. Residents shouted Latosha Harlin's name as they torched Korean-owned businesses including soon J.A. Du's own Empire Liquor. The riot didn't end until 2,000 troops from the California National Guard were called in. More than 50 people died, and more than 2,000 were injured, leaving the city with $1 billion in damages. After these riots, a federal trial saw two of the lapped officers who beat Rodney King finally serve time for their crimes. Although they only ended up doing 30 months in prison, 
Latosha Harlins, however, saw no such justice. In the years following Harlins' killing, rapper Tupac Shakur provided her with a little hint of justice by ensuring that her name would never be completely forgotten. He dedicated his track, Keep Your Head Up, to the 15-year-old girl, and put her name in many of his other songs. On Something To Die For, he sings. Natasha Hall, bottle of juice, not something to die for. Please click the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with my channel. Thanks for watching and take care.